It is early November and I am still in shorts and t-shirts getting the wood yard as full as I possibly can. I'm also getting, this was a small load that I made. This is all, well, it's not all maple, believe it or not. There's right there, that's elm. But the four or five handled it well. If anyone's curious, this is what green maple looks like. So this tree was probably alive a couple weeks ago and it has been split and that's what it looks like. Maple starts to brown out pretty quick though, but it doesn't mean that it's seasoned. So not here, this is cherry. This stuff right here, that is maple that is probably two weeks old and the oldest stuff is here and you can start to see it's getting a little whiter as it's coming this way. Uh, that's what it looks like when it starts to dry. And this is what it looks like right when it um, is split. Then, coming right here, this is what it looks like when it is seasoned and it is ready to go. This wood is very dry. The customers are going to love it. This is mostly maple. This wood, I can take this to either a restaurant or residential. And that's just our style. Small splits is worth more money. People appreciate it. They're willing to spend more to get quality firewood. Uh, but that's what it looks like when it is green. The situation though, guys, is <laughs> I have a practice called first in, first out. They use it in the food service. They, it's an acronym, it says it's uh, FIFO, F-I-F-O, first in, first out. This would be my first in, first out system. However, I started pulling from the middle of it instead of the end. So I would like start pulling from here and go this way. And then I would restock with my green and the green always chases the dry. And that's how we always keep seasoned firewood on hand. Well, why is this in the middle missing? That is because when I was looking down the aisle, when I was looking down the road, this side was starting to tip over like it was getting ready to fall. And we have a standard here. We have not had a row of firewood fall over in this many years. So I thought, well, what the heck? I'll just pull it from this side and I won't have to restack. And that's why we're in the middle. And this stuff here will be the next to go. And then I'll just start stacking green and going this way. This is all residential. Well, I say it's residential. Yes, this is what I'm pulling from for our next deliveries. It's just gorgeous seasoned firewood. And then you can see in the background the green maple and it's getting stacked. So that's what it looks like. I think if you were ever buying firewood and the company's telling you it's seasoned and it shows up looking like that, that's a clue. The guy I buy firewood off still, he has a roof that he keeps a lot of it under and some of the stuff in the back never really gets the sun on it, although it's dry. And it kind of winds up looking like this color, but this is cherry and this is green. This was just stacked. I'll show you. So this is a gradient of cherry. So this is the greenest stuff and the driest stuff is up here. So this is pretty green. Yeah, you know, there's really no checking on it at all. And then we start going here. You can tell the color starting to change. There we go. And then the driest here you can tell we're starting to get a little bit drier. So whenever I had cherry come in, we just stacked it up against this. And that's why you start seeing a change. And then we come on all the way up to the end. And this is the, this is the dry season stuff. And then whenever you stack firewood, one of the cues to look for, if it was stacked, you have, let me find a good piece here for you. You have graying where it was exposed to the air and then where it was stacked, you know, the sun didn't bleach it out. So you'll see it on maple where the ends are grayed out. But then when you look at the piece on the inside, 
you know, it still has its color. This stuff isn't dry on this end, so we're not going to be delivering this until later in the winter. But that is how we try to do things, guys. First in, first out, we sell seasoned firewood. I have learned that sitting on firewood, stacking it and letting it sit, you can get a heck of a lot more for your efforts. And that's why we stack, because it's the most important thing that we do. Uh, here's a good example. So this is, I think this is pretty much the most recent stuff that we uh, stacked versus right here this is where we were pulling for a restaurant and this was you know we didn't have enough room on the trailer for this to go in so this is a good example here of dry seasoned firewood this stuff is probably eight months old i would say maple dries out pretty quick and especially this year it dried out real quick so this stuff is green as you can get this is this tree was probably had squirrels running around in it a couple weeks ago yeah but stacking wood you know a lot of people i don't know what the deal is with firewood people just think that it's a low-end commodity and it's not worth your effort well i'm here to tell you it is firewood is a commodity just like any other commodity oil drilled out of the ground corn soybeans all alike and there are things that we do with firewood to make it worth even more for instance we separate our species this is all of our oak i call this area oakland and oak is on its own uh seasoning <laughs> schedule uh, got to stack it uh north and south so that the sun hits both sides because if you don't like you're still going to get mushrooms but here's a mushroomy piece but that's just kind of one you know this is still looking pretty good through here if you stack oak and if it's going to sit for a couple years if you stack it um, east and west the north side never gets sun and that's where you start getting the that mushroom growth uh, it's an acidic wood and, and i don't know the mushrooms just seem to like it and here's where this is another example you can see the how stacked wood looks when it gets delivered so you're grayed out on the ends but not on the face and I would tell you too if you were to ever buy oak firewood and they're telling you it's seasoned I would expect it to have probably leaves scattered throughout your load which would tell you that it has set for a while at least through one season where the leaves fell and got trapped in between the pieces but seasoned if you're looking at, you know, the standard is 20% moisture content. See this one here, we're starting to get a little tippy. When wood dries out, it shrinks and then you might get a little bit of a lean to it and you just got to keep them straight. But the standard is 20% moisture and I have had 18 month old oak that was split small like this. I had split one open and it was still reading over 30% moisture inside. Just awful. <laughs> That's why I don't like oak. I get tired of looking at it. But this is the restaurant. This, this oak though is for one restaurant and they asked for one year old oak because they don't like green because it's too acidic. And uh, they said that um, the moisture content after one year is good enough for them. What they don't like though are these smaller pieces and that's why I've since changed the way I produce for them. If you look on the far end, which is my greenest oak, the pieces are bigger. I ran all these through a traditional knife. Uh, they like bigger pieces like this. And this stuff, I think <laughs> I lose track sometimes. This stuff here is the greenest, uh, starting here and then going this way. Uh, this area is, those are all the logs I cut open that had ants in them. I didn't want to have to deal with ants, so I just stuck them out of the way. When I process all that hickory, I'm stacking the hickory in here. Hickory is gross. It gets that bug that chews into it and it creates that dust. I have some over here. I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah, but the yard, man, this is about the fullest I have ever been, and this is in November. This yard is paying off. I'm getting logs. They're coming in. 
Uh, this is where I bring all the logs that won't fit through the processor and we chainsaw. When I get the axis back, we're going to park it and just start getting splitting on these. Here's where the hickory, I tried to get rid of all that stuff that was here. See this sawdust? That's from that bug. It chews holes into it. Here are the holes. And it lays its larvae. And I'm serious. That bug must have the strongest jaws on planet Earth because hickory is hard wood, man. And it chews and chews and chews into that and then it lays its eggs and it leaves. And there were times this summer, I guess it was the spring, I would see a log in my pile and it looked like it was moving. And that was all those bugs that were on crawling around and just trying to find a nest. Ugh. If it wasn't for the intoxicating aroma from a hickory stick, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want it on here at all. It's gross. Every time you stack it, you kind of get itchy. That stuff just blows and gets all over you when you're sweaty and it sticks to you and it's gross. And then when it rains, you know, it kind of turns to paste. It's just unsightly. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. I just had a idea when I was seeing all the different colors of wood and without even putting a moisture meter to it to test its moisture content, there are just certain things that you can tell just by looking at it, you know. Well, what the heck. This stuff here was stacked probably a week ago, maybe two weeks. This is green, two week old, uh, and behind it is seasoned. So there's your contrast. This stuff is not gonna burn. It'll probably put your fire out. Uh, this stuff here will be a joy to burn. Won't smoke, won't gum up your chimney. And for me, you can sell it for more money. And that's how we make money here. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this. It is just, what the heck? It's like summertime here in Ohio. I hope everyone has a great day.